From Monday to Tuesday, you don't have any fun. From Wednesday to Thursday, just gonna have a run. Friday and Saturday, you're always getting drunk. And Sunday, you stay at home and never go to church. In studio tonight, we have Alicia, the sexual intellectual. Also, we three weeks, four weeks gone. It's he been is a while. back. It's been a while. Welcome back, George, from My Night Out RI. Thanks, Ed. Thanks to be back. Good to be back. Nice well, to see you, Tony. So you've been gone for quite a while, George. Alicia, we will get to you in just a second, but we have to beat him up a little, pick his brain, as it were. Hey, now. Um, where have you gone? What have you eaten in the last three weeks of note? Because, you know, I, I've actually had to, to skip this section because you weren't here for me to abuse. Well, it's been a busy three weeks. And first of all, I just want to thank everybody for their words of kindness and sympathy. Uh, you know, our, my family lost a, a special person in our family, and um, it kind of kept me away for a little while. But um, we've started to get back in the groove, slowly but surely. And... Um, you know, we'd been basically just staying near to our neighborhood, so we did a lot of uh, Thirsty Beaver, as you've heard me say many, many times, is one of our places we go to regularly. I, I, I can't say enough about the Thirsty yeah. Beaver. It is very good. Yeah. So when you have that type of uh, establishment, I guess, in your neighborhood, it's kind of hard to, like, or justify leaving for a quick bite. So we kind of hit the Thirsty Beaver at least once a week. There's nothing wrong with hitting the beef on, on a... <laughs> oh, yeah, we, uh, no. We had the, uh, the thirsty beaver. <laughs> yeah, they just started to serve clams at the thirsty beaver too. So, 
This is going to be one of those episodes <laughs> similar to the, Cess, the, the illicit Cess Carney episode. Cess, if you're listening, we had a great time. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, Thirsty Beaver is always, a, uh, like I said, a, a weekly um, stop for us. Um, <clears throat> we ventured out um, last night. We headed down into, uh, I guess it was on the Warwick East Greenwich line on, route, on Post Road called the Shanty. Uh, yep, which that's was very good. to Warwick. Yeah. It, well, almost to East Greenwich from, from that, our that's area. That's true. You're halfway in between. So we had this great little meal called um, the TV Dinner. And the TV Dinner comes out served on a prison tray. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's like a cafeteria style, so you got all your food at once right on this tray. And it was pretty good. So we enjoyed that. And then, um, you know, now that it's summertime, we'd love to be outside in Rhode Island. So uh, <clears throat> yesterday we did the... Um, the Hope Street Farmer's Market, which is in Lippitt Park. Okay. Fantastic. It's always um, – th- that, that event seems to get bigger and bigger every year. It runs from now and through October, and there is a number of local businesses there that you can support, uh, both uh, from a food standpoint and there's also some other vendors with uh, crafts and, and, and uh, you know, uh, things that you can buy as well. Well, I heard that, and this is only my, doing my own reconnaissance because I am the uh, – the Facebook stalker, um, you uh, you hit a local Rhode Island landmark while you were uh, on hiatus. You hit Wright's Chicken Farm, which is near and dear to every fat guy's heart. I well, got to tell you, it's not one of my favorite places to go. I'll, I'll be honest with you; it's it's just not one of my favorite places to go. But it, it's usually a place that my wife's family selects whenever. They want to celebrate something for some strange reason. It's like, let's because go to Wright's Farm. Um, well, it's okay. Little Rhode Island history. There's, there have been three epic chicken places that, uh, of such. You have Wright's Chicken Farm. You have uh, Village Haven, which is only about five miles away from Wright's Chicken Farm. The only difference is Village Haven has cinnamon buns versus uh, just the regular rolls. And unfortunately, it is now gone. In Central Falls, there was Conrad's. Three. There are other places that do the chicken dinner the same way, or, or similar, I should say. It. Uh, you, know, you have West Valley Inn. But of note, the, those are my three favorites. Yeah, so I guess when you have 25 people that need to go to dinner at once, Wright's is probably the place to go. But it's just hard to imagine how that chicken's being prepared in that back. They were on. <laughs> they were it just on, comes out within seconds. Well, it, they, they prepare it. It's cooked for hours beforehand. Now, well, you, if you watch food TV as much as I do, trust mm-hmm. me, they have actually been on twice on Food Network to show how they cook their chicken and how they get the chicken the way it is. It is amazing. I mean, when you're feeding a 1,000 people at a time, oh, yeah. it's fascinating how efficient they are. Oh, exactly. Uh, they know exactly how much food to bring out because it's very rarely that you ask for anything more. Well, uh, the uh, the place I have to mention, uh, new restaurant's only been around for about five months. It's the first time. You know, you get to let them work out the bugs the first couple of months. Uh, Jason's Asian Bar and Grill, which is literally down the street from the shanty. Uh, it's in East Greenwich, right over by Sienna and uh, Tees, Benny's, you know, a few other landmarks over there. Uh, excellent, excellent sushi. Uh, I had myself a zombie over there, which was unbelievable. It was borderline unflammable. And Beverage. they had something I've never had before, which was sushi pizza. Oh. Oh. It sounds it sounds wrong, but it is so right. <laughs> it, you, everyone is shaking their head except for the people terrible. who have been. <laughs> No, they 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 use they don't use regular dough. They use a wonton or an egg roll wrapper. They cook it and then they put the sushi on it after. After it's it's cold, but not ice cold because you have the a little bit of warm from the uh, egg roll wrapper. The sauce on it. They use either uh, salmon or spicy tuna, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, they have rolls there that range anywhere from the six seven dollar range upwards to the fifteen dollar range. Definitely, definitely worth a try. Uh, even if you're into just the tiki drinks, they have a very large selection of the tiki drinks. 
Uh, like I said, I did the zombie. They have the fog cut of the mind erase. The, the, the I think you took a picture of the zombie, right? Didn't you post it up? I think no, I liked that picture. That would that would be Tony. Tony's the one who takes pictures. I believe that was the head hunter that I uh, I had enjoyed. I know, somebody posted a drink. It looked delicious. I just like on Facebook. I'm like, oh yeah, it looks nice. <laughs> Which is a perfect segue uh, to Alicia because Alicia does a lot. Well, she is the sexual intellectual. <laughs> that pretty much speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she has been seen occasionally at local fetish nights, um, which brings me to my first you know, question to you. Have you ever noticed in conversations at either a fetish night or even just in, in sex talk in general, people will allude either as you're talking about sex, they will... Trans, uh, transverse or, or the, 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 the conversation will go towards food or if you're talking to these same people about food it'll all just slide over back to sex. It, it's like the two go hand in hand with this, the sensual feelings and emotions they, they evoke. I think it's because they both make people really happy. I mean you have sex, you're happy, you eat you're happy so maybe it's just two things that kind of coincide with each other because of the feelings that they bring I personally, every single conversation I have on the face of the earth ends up talking about sex. So I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, you went to church today? So, sex. <laughs> it's just a thing. So for me, food is definitely hand in hand with that. All right. Well, why don't we uh, get a little bit of your background? How, number one, how did you get named or did you name yourself the sexual intellectual? And, and what do you have to back this up? Wow. <clears throat> That's a good question. That's a really good question. And I have to do some... It all started back when? Um, no, about two years ago now, maybe two and a half years ago, um, I was dating somebody from the local music scene, and they had connections at another local radio station. Well, you can say WBOB. Okay, just checking. <laughs> I like to play it safe. I'll let you say it. And, um, and they just kind of reached out, and you know, the idea was thought about, like, hey, we want to do this show about sex. And you talk a lot about it, and you seem to know a lot about it, and you're having a lot of it, so do you want to do it? And um, so through some brainstorming between all of us as a whole, we thought it was a cool idea, and I figured, what the hell, I don't really have much to lose. And then it became a hit, and so I started doing my own full-time thing, and then we kind of parted ways. And so now I do my own podcast about sexuality. Okay. Now, your education or your background inside, do you just... You have a lot of it, therefore you know a lot about it? Or? It started off that way. So I, I did things um, a little bit backwards compared to most people. So most people go to college and then they do their profession. I started off doing my profession um, just because I had a lot of, not personal experience, not just personal experience, but I had done a lot of research and it had always been something that was a passion of mine. So I did, I watched a lot of documentaries and I read a lot of books. Um, and I read a lot of books too. Unfortunately, it's mostly pictures in the ones I read. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different kind of book. Um, and so then I started doing the show and meeting, <laughs> get me serious around here. Um, and then I started meeting people in the field and I did an internship at the local uh, Center for Sexual Pleasure and Health, and that's in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Okay. And they are a facility that um, is solely educational-based. It's a safe space that people can go in um, and just ask questions, or um, they have a vast library of sexual health, m you know, mental health related to sexuality, gender, um, all these different you know, variety genres of books. And you can sit down and read a book and hang out and um, just be comfortable. You know, nothing... Sexual happens there. I no. always like to clarify that. But if I was to go, or it, would it, was it a, you know, I just have a question. Walk in. Hey, excuse me. This is my question. Answer it for me. Or do you kind of show them? Hey, here's a couple of books that might be good to you or good for you to get your answer. Or how does that work? I, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, the staff and the interns there are very knowledgeable, and they all have some type of background in sexuality. Um, if they didn't have the answers for you, they would definitely provide the resources, and that's part. It's, it's a little bit of everything. So it's a little bit of you know, discussion in the moment. It's a little bit of here are these resources for later thinking or later research, um, or if I haven't you know, answered your question to, to the full extent. Because some people come in and they have a question, and that's only the, the tip of the iceberg. You know, A lot of us carry shame with our sexuality we're not really comfortable just asking strangers about questions um, and we're lucky these days you have the internet so there's a vast you know majority of information out there but I'm, I'm very well versed in the internet stuff but then again <laughs> 
I'm thinking it's not the same resources you're looking at. <laughs> no, not in this case. Well, why don't we take a break because I'm going to start giggling real quick. Um, we have a world premiere. Have you heard of Dionysus Park Ranger? Excellent band. 